Hello and welcome to our special 2017 wrap-up video. I'm Tim the Dad. I'm Megan the Daughter. And we're going to talk about everything that happened in 2017. Mm -hmm. And we mean everything. Everything, yep. At least as it relates to the channel. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so let's always start off, like we always do, with our G Wiz numbers. Mm -hmm. And you want to say G Wiz? G Wiz, yeah. yeah. You need so, a buzzword for that. Well, you know, that's what they say. That's what the kids call it these days. No, we don't. Anywho. Um, we have 3,750 plus subscribers, so thank you guys for tuning in and subscribing. It means a lot, especially since I did not think this channel was ever going to take off. So thank you guys for that support. Yeah, and now here's here's what everybody really wants to know. The okay. breakdown of wins and losses. Now, we do have to say that Megan was gone for a big chunk of the year, yeah. and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and Mom kind of jumped in, and Mom played a few games. Mm -hmm. So... Here is how the wins broke down. I won eight games. I won 12 games. And mom won five. But if I was here, I probably would have won some more. But Yeah, you, you never know. know. No. So hopefully we'll have more uh, more games to play this year Definitely, with you yeah. being around. Hopefully, yeah. Um, I attended Origins mm -hmm. for two and a half days this year. And I attended Gen Con for three days. You didn't get to go to I any. was supposed to. Yeah. Um, well, at least for Gen Con Origins, I wasn't going to. Right. Um, so I went back and did the Disney College program again. I was supposed to be just a summer alumni program, so pretty much May to August, I would have been back in time for Gen Con. Then I decided I wasn't quite ready to come home yet, so I extended my program until January. Um, so I came back first of the year. So and didn't do a lot for the channel mainly. We did some videos when I was down there, though. Not very many. We did like two. I yeah, think. we did a few, we but tried. that's that's why you saw. Uh, two new segments on the mm -hmm. channel, uh, uh, Lunch Gaming with Dad's Group or something like that. I forget what they even forget called it. Call and then Game of the Week, which was with my weekly game group. Mm -hmm. So you saw uh, a couple different ways we were able to uh, talk about and review games. Um, now, Megan obviously has not had a chance to play those. No. And that kind of goes into our next segment, which is the top games that came out in 2017 as it relates to me. Megan didn't get a chance. Actually, you get a, did I get to play one, one. Uh, since you've been back. Yeah. We were hoping that she would actually get to play all of my top five. And then I jumped back into college. So. Yeah, so yeah, that didn't really work out. Yeah. But my number five game for two th that came out in 2017 mm -hmm. is... Dun, dun, dun. Whistle Stop from Bezier Games. Now, this one uh, debuted at Origins and I think officially started selling at Gen Con. Um, and they sold out real quick. Yeah. This is a really neat, fun um, train game where you're laying tiles. You're trying to get your trains from one coast to the other. Uh, it doesn't have a map. It's it's all modular with little uh, hexes that have train tracks and such. Um, but that's a really cool game. I've really enjoyed playing this. I think you're going to like this too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we just, just didn't get a chance yeah. to play that with you. Next up. Your top my, four. My number four is uh, a game that my buddy Dwight introduced me to, and we played this a lot at work over lunch, and that is Ethnos, and this is from Simon. Mm -hmm. This uh, is another game I think you'll really enjoy. This yeah. is, It's a fast game. I mean, we can play this game, two-player game, we'll probably knock this thing out in like 30 minutes. It says less. 45 to 60, so yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a really neat game. Again, this is another one uh, that is part of the, the lunch game review, so you can go and check out more on that. Now the next game, I actually did get to play the other night. Um, we did a little Facebook Live video of it. Uh, that is Dice Forge yeah. from Libelin and Asmodee. I really thought this was cool. Yeah, this the, yeah. the dice mechanic on this is really neat. Mm -hmm. Again, this is another one that was on uh, our lunch gaming uh, review because we have played it several times at lunch. It plays super fast. A uh, little bit with the setup and the takedown. But gameplay overall is is yeah. really quick, and the the dice mechanic is really neat by changing the bases of the dice. And I kind of gave my little review on it um, after we played the first game on Facebook. So if you want to check that out, it was a Facebook Live video, and it's out there now for you guys to yeah. Do. And it's not a playthrough; it's no. just basically just Megan's review of it. So uh, you be sure to want to check that out. Mm -hmm. Okay, my number two. This was really close to being my number one. Um, this is Lorenzo El Magnifico from Simon. Now, this is um, a worker placement game that has eh, got a religious theme. Yeah. Um, but it's it's very cool. I've played this uh, quite a bit with my buddy Chris. He has really enjoyed this. In fact, I think after his first play of it, he went out and got it. Um, 
but everybody that I've taught this game to has really, really liked it. So uh, this is my number two. And then your number one is... My number one uh, probably is no surprise for anybody that has followed us on Facebook, uh, followed my little wrap-up for Gen Con. Uh, I also have to give props to Tim Norris because he's the one who put this game on my radar. Uh, I've played it several times. I've loved it. You, I don't know if you're going to like this one or not. <laughs> I'll have to see. That is The Thing, Infection at Outpost 31. This is from USAopoly. This game, it takes a minimum of four players. Okay. So we have played this at several game days. We have obviously can't get this in over lunch. We've not played this at my weekly game group, but we played it several game days that I've gone to um, with uh, most of those people. But this is an awesome social deduction, hidden trader game. Um, and I love being the infected because... It just uh, sounds wrong. Well, <laughs> I, I've played it straight both times mm -hmm. and nobody's ever suspected me uh, the, when I was the trader. When I wasn't the trader, it was... I didn't like it as much because I like kind of being yeah. the devious one. But you um, see, that surprises me that no one suspected you because when we played, what, Mafia de Cuba, you were awful at it. I was awful. You just have, you don't have a good poker face for that type of thing. No, but this this game, this is awesome. If you are looking for a hidden trader game or a social deduction game, this is the one to get. This by far uh, was one of my favorite games that I played in 2017. It's my favorite game that came out in 2017. So... Yeah, the thing. All right. All right. Well. So next, let's talk about our top shows that we had. These are shows that we had on our channel uh, in the year of 2017, uh, the, the, and based on views. Mm -hmm. So our top view was Santorini. Had 2.7. Yeah, 2.7 thousand views. Lots of views. Uh, the Marvel Munchkin and Expansions show that we did. Um, that was more of a preview video, but it had a lot of... I was going to say, I don't remember actually playing other than like opening it up. Uh, you, no, because we actually got that game in the day you left for Disney. Okay. Uh, you might remember it came in and I had you take a real quick picture when we were yeah. getting, going out the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've actually, I've played this a few times with um, my lunch group and they're not big Munchkin fans, but they like the Marvel theme. So it kind of all worked out there. Mm -hmm. And then our, uh, the third third show was uh, Castles of Burgundy, the board game. Mm -hmm. So those are the... That had 1.7. Yeah, those are the top three games as far as views. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, those were earlier on in the year. Yeah. Um, but just wanted to, to throw that out. So let's get to our top five games of the year. But let's get to honorable mentions first. Okay. So we'll do that. Um, I'll go ahead and start this one. Um... I kind of was picking and choosing from the games that I played, which wasn't that many. I know a lot we filmed a while previously, um, so I kind of had to go back and think, what did I actually play this year? <laughs> um, but one that I did play recently was Okie Dokie. Um, we filmed that one when you came down to visit one time. Yeah. I just love that little game. I don't know why. It's so fun. It's easy. It's kind of, you have to work with your opponent a little bit. Not yeah. your opponent, because you're kind of playing together. But, you're, yeah, you're all playing together. I don't um, know. I just really like that one. That one's from Tasty Mentral, and yeah. my buddy Lance over at Tasty Mentral is the one who put me onto that. So, and that was at uh, Origins, I think. He's like, "Yo, you, you're gonna love this game." I do. Um, I think it's cool. So yeah, that's it's a, a fun little one. It is fun. And then you want to go with your next one? Like, no, I'll go. You can go with go all your honorable mentions. All right. Now. Um, Lost Cities, um, the card game, not the board game. We haven't, so haven't played the board, played game, the board yet. game yet. So I played the card game. Um, that one's cool. I like that one with the. Um, you're trying to remember the, the, the different <laughs> so, you know, expeditions yeah expeditions, expeditions and yeah. you had to like go in the number order and all that which i thought was really cool um i just kind of like the little card games and then my other one is the expansion for legendary guardians of the galaxy obviously it's no surprise guardians is my favorite marvel movie um so i really like that i love legendary um that's always been one of my favorite games so just the guardians aspect of it yeah that probably would have been on really the like mentions it. of mine as well mm -hmm. uh but since i knew you were putting it on there i, I chose to go different route. yeah so my honorable mentions were uh steam park oh, that's um, a good one. it's it's a good one but if you've watched our video on that um megan rolls and and her, she's just too fast so you know i'm old really my, my fingers one. don't move very fast um <laughs> Steampunk Rally, which mm -hmm. is uh, a steampunk themed game with dice. Of course, yeah. it's got dice, so that's why it gets honorable mention uh, with me. And it's mm -hmm. a racing game, so that was 
that was pretty cool. And then Kerala, uh, which may surprise a lot of people, that is a very simple laid back tiling game with painted elephants. Um, I don't know that one. Do Mom I? and I played that. I was going to say, like, that one says nothing. We would play that after dinner, and it was just one of those that you just kind of get on the table, you know, you're talking about your day, you're just, you know, you're drafting some tiles, you're putting some tiles down, you're moving your little elephant around, you know. So yeah. it's a nice little uh, laid back game. All right. So now let's get to our top five games of 2017. All right. Okay, so these, I want to remind everybody, are games that appeared on our channel mm -hmm. that we have both played. Yeah. There were a lot of games that I played that we have reviews on. I discounted those because, you know, this is Dad versus Daughter, so I do want to kind of keep it just to that. Yeah. So, my number five game. And my number five game. Oh, wow. Yeah. We match. We do. Um, and it is going to be World's Fair, uh, 1893 Renegade games. From Renegade games. From, yeah. And, uh... Um, Box nine? Fox Trot. Fox Trot. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I played this uh, like a couple weeks ago. This this game always resurfaces. Mm -hmm. uh, you really very, like this game. Very launchable. Yeah. In fact, when this game, and if you watch our video on this, you'll find out I talk about going down the rabbit hole, mm -hmm. researching uh, the World's Fair that happened happened in Chicago. Uh, one of the buildings is still standing, which is now the Museum of Science and Industry, which mm -hmm. we've been to. We have been to. Uh, so yeah, we both really enjoyed this game. Mm -hmm. Um, so now, so, so that was your number five and my number five. Yeah, so we'll my number yours. four is Castles of Burgundy. Now, I do need to preface that this is the board game version. Yes. Uh, because there is a card game version, which there's we've also done. And version. there's a new dice version, which we have not done a show on, but we will. There are a lot of versions of this. And like, well, there's as, only three now. I, okay, but I feel like, you know, we would open up the boxes of like, oh, hey, we got new games. I'll be like, Castles of Burgundy again? Like, And then you're like, <laughs> oh, it's a different version. And yeah. I'm like... But it's still the same-ish version. It has a lot of similarities. At least the card game does. Yeah, I actually played but this, I think... The board's good. In 2016 was the first time I played it. Um, I, I think my buddy Dwight was the one who introduced me to it. But uh, uh, I really enjoy Castles of Burgundy. This is this is a really cool game. Mm -hmm. it's, it's neat. Of course, you know, it's got dice, so I like Everything it. with dice with you. <laughs> um, my number four is going to be kind of on the feuding side of the universes here. Yeah, especially since uh, you pro proclaim yourself I as a Marvel do girl. I do Marvel girl, but I'm a DC TV girl, if that makes sense, because I like the CW DC shows, um, which is part of the reason why I really like the Teen Titans deck builder um, from Cryptozoic. Um, I knew a lot of the characters from the Teen Titan cartoon show, and I kind of would like start picking out some different ones that I kind of heard of. I know the expansion, the Renegade pack. Had yeah, like, that has Arrow. Yeah, that has like all of those guys. And we had the, there's the, a Cotton Cold Cardinal. Yeah, and the uh, the Crisis version, yeah, the Crisis that expansion one. pack. So like, that. those are packs I definitely do want to try because I really liked this deck builder. Um, It's got a different feel to it than Legendary. So it kind of yeah. depends on what type of deck builder in the comic verse, I guess, you want to go for. But I really did like this one. I wasn't too sure at first, um, but I really did like it. I did like it too, but I just don't know the characters in the, uh, no. in the Teen Titans. I mean, I watched the cartoon if I was homesick and stuff, but I did like it. I thought it was a really good game. Then it got us some more exposure to characters we're not too familiar with, so that kind of helped. That is true. So, yeah. So, All right, so now we are to number my three. number three. My number three is Steamworks from Tasty Metro Games. Now, uh, this is an engine building game about building engines. Uh, and it's really cool. It uh, is good. Uh, because you don't just get to do the, or use the engines you build, you can use your opponent's engines. Yeah. Uh, and I think in our playthrough that we did of this, you used my engines probably as much as I, I think did. so, yeah. Um, but it's, it's a really cool game. It's a kind of a worker placement. Mm -hmm. Like I said, engine building game. Um, and I made my own uh, insert for it. You did. Because it really needed an insert. So mm -hmm. uh, I made a foam core insert, and there's pictures on our Facebook page about that. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out. And then my number three game is Paperback, uh, my Flowers Games. 
Um, this one you kept telling me about for a while. You're like, oh, you're gonna really like it once you get to play it. And I was just like, eh, I don't know. Then we sat down and played it, and I loved it. I thought it was so cool. I like books in general, so I thought it was cool. Um, I'm not the best at it, though, I feel like. I'm well, not good at some of the words and the letters. I'm like, I don't know what to make with this and all, but... If you like words with friends... Yeah. Those, and Scrabble, those kind of games. I think you're going to like this. It's still Plus, a really fun game, though. And, and it's I a like deck builder. It. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool deck builder. I think that's kind of why I like it, because I do like deck builders a lot. So I did kind of gravitate more to this, and I like the theme of it and all. I mean, so I, I did just cool. introduce you to Dominion last you did, night. did, so. yeah. I suck at that, though. <laughs> well, you just started playing it. I'm not Can I have that? that? Because oh, this yeah. is actually my number two game of the year, uh, paperback. Uh, and I just got to see a demo, uh, or play, actually play a demo of hardback. We're mm -hmm. going to love hardback. Yeah. Um, but paperback is really good. Uh, basically everything you said, it's a really good deck builder. Uh, it's really easy. It, mm -hmm. it plays relatively fast. Uh, I have played this at a higher player count. I think, um, I've played it with five. That tends to slow down a bit. I do like it more at the lower player count, but yeah. it's, it's really good. Really enjoy paperback. Um, Check it out. All right. My number two game, probably isn't a surprise, it is going to be Scoville Labs by Tasty Mitchell Games. I love Scoville in general. It's probably definitely one of my favorite Tasty Mitchell games that's out there. And technically, this is an expansion, but it we're is. counting it as a game. But, I mean, it's a video we did. We kind of go on we that We did do a show on it, yeah. So, I don't know. I thought it was really cool. I liked the aspect of kind of like with your Punnett squares almost and kind of trying to do all of that with making the different peppers and concoctions of it. I thought it was a really cool addition. Um, definitely would add it. You, know, you don't think you want to play the base game without this one once you play it. So I really liked this one a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I really mm -hmm. enjoy that one too. All right, my number one game, and it's actually one that I did uh, with mom, and mm -hmm. that is The Quest for El Dorado from Robin's Burger. Uh, this is a deck building racing game where you are racing through the jungle uh you've got to have machetes you've got to have canoe paddles uh you've got to have money you're, you're buying cards and such uh really a lot of fun it plays fast it's got a modular board so every game can be different you can set it up however you want to uh really really enjoyed this game and mom liked it too so if mom liked it you know it's got to be a yeah. good game but no, it's uh, not totally into a lot of games. Yeah, and this one I think is it's been a very popular game for 2017, uh, so you shouldn't have any problem picking this up if you're interested. But yeah, you can check out our our uh, playthrough video on that. But yeah, mm -hmm. Quest for El Dorado. And my number one game, I know there was a lot of hype around it. Definitely a lot of hype on our channel, as it was our most viewed, Santorini by Roxley Game Laboratories. Um. <laughs> I love how modular it is, and I love all the little different people that come in it. They're all kind of unique. Um, I just think it's really cool, like, actually being able to build and, like, jump around from, like, the different tops and all. Mm -hmm. I just really thought this game was really interesting. Um, how the pieces, they kind yeah. of interlock a little, too. Mm -hmm. That's kind of neat. I just thought it was really cool component-wise, artwork and all. I love this game, hands down. And there's really tons fun. of replayability because there's you only pick one god mm -hmm. a piece. And uh, there's a ton of them that come there's with the a game. Lot, yeah. So and a lot. There's an expansion too. We have the there Golden is an Fleece expansion. expansion. Yeah. We actually haven't played with the Golden Fleece. We We've only played with the with the the, uh, base. the base game. But uh, yeah, Sansarini. That's a good game. It's very I, good. I enjoy yep. that. All right. So uh, out on our Facebook page, we reminded our viewers we wanted them to be part of our show, mm -hmm. and we sent them over to our guild over on Board Game Geek. So. Uh, if you're not aware of that, we do have a guild on Board Game Geek. Mm -hmm. It's where we can post uh, questions. We can have uh, more detailed interaction with our viewers. So uh, we had two of our viewers that submitted their top five. Uh, Daniel K. He's also one of the big viewers on Dad, Dave, and the Elephant. Yeah. Uh, in fact, he watched one of our live videos he the other did, night. Yeah. Um, uh, Daniel, don't you have anything else to do? <laughs> you should be playing games. Uh, but Daniel's top five was Viral, which I've not played. Uh, Yamatai, which I have played. Uh, I think that's going to be a game that you're going to like. Yeah. Um, Fallout, I've not played Fallout, but I know there's a video game I think that, that's based Fallout, on. Yeah. yeah. And it's not Fallout Boy. No. So. I do like Fallout Boy. Uh, Pandemic Legacy Season 2 and Mountains of Madness. So there's a Season 2. So, like, there's... Because they had a season one. 
Is it like a TV show? Did I miss something? Like No, well, <laughs> because it's a legacy game, it's a one and done. You play it and you're tearing up cards. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're putting stickers on the boards. Cities get destroyed, you know. I know you're not a fan of Pandemic. I'm not a Pandemic fan, which is weird considering how much I love Thunderbirds. Yeah. Because it's very much, it's the same designer and same concept and all. That was your game of the year that last was. year. I love. I still love Thunderbirds. That's such a good game. But, like, I just cannot stand Pandemic for the life of me. I don't like it. Um, Mike H., his top five was Tiny Epic Galaxies Beyond the Black. Yeah, that's an expansion to Tiny Epic Galaxies. I was going to say, yeah. Which you've not played. Not I've, ag- I've played a solo game, and it's on the channel. Mm-hmm. Um, Professor Evil in the Citadel of Time. That, that sounds interesting. It's right here. I was going to say, it sounds really that's, cool. That's one. Uh, I got the demo at Gen Con, but uh, I haven't actually got to play a full game of it yet. Well, we should try that out. Yeah, that'll be on our channel this year. Um, Azul was number three. Uh, Sagrada was number two. Sagrada is another one I think you'd like. Yeah. Uh, I've studied about it in college, so I know a bit about it. But uh, some of the guys in my lunch group have it, so we've played that quite a mm-hmm. bit. And then his number one was Hero Realms, the Ruin of Thander um, campaign deck. Yeah, I've played Hero Realms. It's by the same people that did Star Realms. Mm-hmm. Uh, I prefer Star Realms. Yeah. To, yeah, just kind of one of those things. That's cool. All right, so every year we always, or I always, put together like a little trailer of the games that you can expect to see on our mm-hmm. channel uh, for this year. So why don't you check it out? So, 2018 is officially here. We are a bit late on our wrap-up video. Well, we had to wait for you to come back. Yeah, that too. Um, so, what we have going on this year? Well, I know that at you. least I will be <laughs> attending, or at least I plan to, mm-hmm. plan to be at both Origins and Gen Con this year. I'm hoping to at least be at Gen Con. Um, yeah. I might be at Origins. Um, applications open up again very soon to go back to Disney for the summer. And I will only be down there for the summer because I do have to come back and go to college in the fall. So um, I might miss Origins again this year. But definitely. But if you're around, you'll, you'll probably be there. We've, I will. We already have our badges. Yes. So uh, if you're around, then if we, I am. we will be there. If not, I might be working again for the mouse. Yeah. Which is no complaint to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we also want to thank uh, some very special people. Yes. We launched uh, a Patreon account last year. Last year? Last year. I think it was last year. We did last year. Uh, and we've had uh, a few supporters on that. Mm-hmm. So I want to give a big shout out to Adam Letourneau, George Ellis, Andrew Mitten, and Aaron Weeks. Thank uh, you guys Thanks for so contributing. Much. We have been able to use those uh, contributions in order to upgrade our lighting and mm-hmm. actually get some microphones so that uh, when we do some of our videos, especially the uh, the ones, the shows that we do at the conventions, mm-hmm. that the audio can be better. So uh, we appreciate you guys' uh, support on that, and big mm-hmm. thank you. Thank you for that. And then we have a lot of publishers because uh without them we probably wouldn't have much of a channel probably not no so let's get right to it thank you so much to tasty minstrel games asmodee robinsberger haba bowers games uh simon idw games rnr mayday game salute usaopoly rather dashing cosmo and WizKids. Yeah, because without you guys, like I said, we wouldn't have much Mm -hmm. of a channel. So we really appreciate your support. And we really like seeing you guys at the convention, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do got to give a shout out to the Rather Dashing folks, um, because at Origins, I was just kind of walking by. And uh, 
one of them said, hey, there's dad versus daughter. Come over here. We want to talk to you. So that was really cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, we've had uh, a lot of conversation with them. We saw them at Gen Con. We've we've, uh, actually done some preview videos at the cons with them. So It gave uh, him a really big head afterwards. So he's like, he called me all excited. Like, there's someone at Gen Con that, like, knew me or Origins. And I'm like... (laughs) I'm like, I'm working, but you got really excited about that. It was really cool because it became a really good partnership. So. Well, and uh, cool. was it last year when you were at uh, FanFest in Chicago? Yeah, uh, it was. One of our viewers uh, actually sent us a message through Facebook and said, I think I've seen daughters uh, double at this convention. And it was me um, at a panel. We were at the same panel together, and I was just like, that was really weird. We never got to meet up, and I'm sorry about that, but it was really cool that we were both were together at a con. Different type of con, not gaming. Yeah. Geeky con for me. Well, you go to all, you go to these cons. You go to, like, Comic-Con, Wizard World, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to Fan Fest. So, yeah, oh. so if you're at any of those types of cons and you see somebody that looks like her, it's probably, it's probably her. <laughs> yeah, so I definitely do attend a lot of comic cons. But yeah. Yeah. So that'll wrap up 2017. I don't think I have anything else to add to that, do you? Not really. We've got a huge stack of games to get to for 2018. Uh, in fact, just looking around, I can see stacks and stacks. So uh, hopefully Megan's schedule will permit us to get those out on a somewhat regular hopefully, basis. Hopefully, yeah. And uh, you've already seen a lot of those unboxings. We've still got That's several unboxings we're going to be doing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, And we've also been experimenting with Facebook Live. Yeah. Um, Thank you to everyone that tunes into that too. I know that's like super cool to like interact with you in real time and do that kind of thing. So I think we might try to do more of those. Probably not too much of an actual gameplay, but maybe when we fir- we get a game in, we do a first, first play of it, do a first impression. Uh, we'll try to give everybody some advance notice that we've mm-hmm. got them out there so that you can schedule time to join. Um, and we might just kind of have a sit down and chat session maybe. sometime if we get to get enough uh, people that want to mm-hmm. leave feedback. So. Yeah. That'll wrap it up, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye. If you would like to support us, you can visit patreon.com slash dadvdaughter. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us.